So another batch of Marvel Snap cards has been data mined and there's a lot to talk about. This is going to be a big, crazy video because we have an entirely new keyword called activate. It's not on reveal. It's activate. Uh, we have perhaps the craziest move card I've ever seen and maybe the best one drop I've ever seen too in this video. Now, keep in mind, as always, these are data mined cards. That means these are not final. They, uh, you know, typically make it through pretty similar. I'd say, you know, on average, three or four of the five cards kind of end up exactly what we see at this stage. But sometimes, you know, one or two will end up uh, notably different from a cost, power, or sometimes even effect standpoint. So if something looks broken now, that doesn't necessarily mean it will be broken. Although sometimes it means exactly that as well. So that said, let's go ahead and kick things off here with the first card, Aranya. She is a new 2-2 and she reads activate. That's a new keyword. Activate, give the last card you played plus two power and move it to the right. Now, notably, this is not an on reveal effect and we're really just speculating here on what activate means. I think it's gonna feel something like, say a Howard the Duck where you put this card in play and then you're basically gonna have to tap it, kind of like hitting a button, uh, in order to activate this given effect. I'm gonna make a quick insert here from the future because I'm not sure I specified that I think this is pretty clearly a one-time use button. I don't think it's something you're gonna be able to hit time and time again. The effects would just be like too crazy. This card would be like off the charts, completely busted. If you could use it time and time again and get you know plus two power movements over and over and over again. So um, just to clarify, like pretty clearly something you're only gonna be able to do once. That doesn't change any of the future conversation. We were already operating under that assumption. I just wanted to make sure I called it out specifically. Uh, and from a gameplay standpoint, that's meaningful because right now with on reveals, they're on a fixed timer. Like if you wanted to play this, you know, um, it would, you know, it would have to be your based on your one drop because the last card you played, if you're playing this on turn two, might be your one drop or, you know, play it on turn five, it's your four drop or whatever. Uh, but you don't always have a lot of flexibility, but with activate, you can basically front load the playing of this card and then choose to activate it whenever. So, you know, you play this on two, maybe you wanna use this ability on the vulture on turn three. So you'd play this on two, you'd get into turn three, you would play the vulture, and then you would hit the button on Aranya. And again, it might just be as simple as tapping the card. Maybe there'll be a confirmation, we don't know. Um, and then that would be the card that moves. So you play Vulture left, hit Aranya. Um, I guess it will happen once the turn starts. I, it's kind of unclear, you know, this is why we say it's speculation. We don't know exactly, because your opponent would sort of need to see that resolving. So you probably hit the button now, and then the sequencing will happen, um, you know, at, at the start of the turn phase, which might be why they had all the movement effects resolving before other things nowadays. They kind of changed the mechanics there a little bit. Maybe that's so that the activate phase has a window in order to sort of move things around during that phase. Um, so, you know, your vulture will get buffed. Or, or if you don't want to do it on your vulture, you miss your vulture on turn three, you can save it for later and play it on your four drop, your five drop, whatever it might be. Uh, you get to make a decision about when to do that and you still get to play this card um, ahead of time, which is nice because sometimes with these like follow-up move effects that we have now with like Doctor Strange or Ghost Spider or whatever that have these on reveal triggers, it can be hard to sort of weave those in from a curve standpoint, like finding the right window, finding the energy for it can kind of throw off other curves. But here you just deposit this two drop early and then you're just set up for later whenever you want. Um, and to be clear, this is a pretty powerful effect, right? This is a total of two, four in stat output, but that movement can of course scale a bunch of stuff even further than that. Uh, any extra move on a vulture or a human torch or whatever can add a bunch of stats. So this seems like it could be a really core piece of the puzzle in a move deck. That said, you know, that's the card. It's awesome. It's going to be strong. There's still a lot to talk about here with activate and how this might work. And I'm kind of torn on how deep we want to get into it in this video, because again, it is all pure speculation. But there are some kind of bigger questions I'll at least toss out and you guys, you know, feel free to speculate with your thoughts in the comments below. For instance, can you activate a card the same turn you play it? So if I play this down like on turn five and I want to activate the vulture right away, can I activate it the exact same turn that it's played? 
That gets a little bit weird just from a kind of controls standpoint because when you play a card, you can also kind of move it, pick it up and literally move it, right? Uh, about where you want to put it, right? Like you have freedom to move a card the turn that you play it. So there's some kind of distinction between like tapping or holding, you know, there's going to have to be so if you're if you're literally, you know, hitting a button like we suspect, there might be some awkwardness there. Does the card have to be locked in for a turn in order to activate it, say, on a following turn? That's a question, I guess. That would also mean, though, that activate cards would be dead on turn six if you played them because you would not ever have that follow up window where it gets like locked into play. Um, so I think you'll be able to activate it the same turn. I think there will just be some kind of, you know, I don't know, they'll sort out something um, with, with how it kind of actually literally controls and plays. The same thing happens if you like play a cloak. You know, there are effects like cloak where you can move things. So it's like, how do I distinguish between clicking Arana to activate it and like dragging Arana to move it? I mean, maybe it's not that hard with, with phones, but there's also PC controls. So I don't know. Just something to think about from a literal controls and mechanics standpoint, which from a game design standpoint is actually sometimes a pretty big hurdle. And Marvel Snap has been very intuitive about sort of controls and actions. So we'll see how they figure that out. I have seen other people speculating that maybe activate is not a button pressed, but it's like you have to play a card on top of this card. In other words, like, you know, if you play this left, you have to play another card left in order to activate the Arana. It's like, it's based on a play action. It's not based on sort of a button press or whatever, like Howard the Ducks. So that could be another explanation for activate. Maybe this has a trigger we're not exactly expecting or it's not as simple as a button press. So I don't know, that's probably enough discussion around how activate works. Uh, I, I think just for the sake of this video, we'll just kind of assume it's a pretty great keyword. I think it's actually, in, in many cases, just much better than an on reveal because, you know, the, the sort of flexibility or control on when to activate it, uh, you know, when to hit that button is going to make differences. It's going to give you a lot more kind of lines and decision points throughout a game, which is probably going to be favorable, particularly for like sequence heavy decks like move in particular. It feels like on reveal has been a big restriction for move decks. So I think activate could come in to solve a lot of problems basically in the move archetype. So in other words, uh, regardless of the mechanics and exactly how they work out, you know, I think we can still sort of generally assess the upside of a card. I think this is a really powerful effect, good base stats, efficient cost. This looks like, you know, a good, a good card, even if we don't know exactly how activate works. So moving on, let's talk about the craziest move card I've ever seen. This is Madam Web. She is a two, three. And she has an ongoing, you can move one of your other cards away from here each turn. And uh, man, this is just like a beautiful movement engine sort of card. Uh, basically giving you a really reliable way to make sure you always have something to move. So, you know, you can play, let's say, a human torch on turn one. Follow it up with a Madam Web. Of course, she's going to need to reveal to get that ongoing online. So then on turn three, you can move your human torch away. You can play a vulture on top of the Madam Web on turn three. Then on turn four, you can move your vulture away. Uh, maybe you could even play Hercules somewhere else in the meantime, right? And start getting some crazy bounces going. Uh, and then on, you know, whatever movement thing is next, whatever movement synergy piece you want, you know, you, on turn five, you, you play a Spider-Man 2099 and then you get to move it on turn six. And in particular, it's really nice. You get to pick where you're moving it because you are the one moving it. It's not, it's not, it doesn't say one of your cards here moves. You can move it. So if you have a 2099 on turn five and you need to delete something in a specific spot of your opponents, boom, you get to choose where to put that 2099. So targeted movement, consistent movement, uh, movement every turn like this is just I, I it just feels like the perfect solution to so many of moves problems between madam web and aranya both looking like really good uh movement synergy cards i think this could really be the era of movement decks so moving on here we're going to take a look at another activate card this is scarlet spider a four five this is always one of my favorite like Spider-Man characters. I always liked his costume for some reason as a kid, the hoodie and stuff. Uh, anyway, he's a four five with activate at an exact clone of this to another location, which um, this looks really good to me. Uh, even if you just like ignore everything and it just said like four five on reveal, summon another four five, that'd be pretty good. That'd be four ten in um, total output. Like that's, that's a lot of like nicely spread stats. 
Cerebro 5 would love it, good cards, Tempo decks would love it. But um, because this is an exact clone, you have some really interesting stat scaling possibilities here as well. Any sort of time you hand buff this, for instance, play Rokoye, Nakia, uh, Fastos, whatever, uh, this becomes, you know, slightly bigger. And then your cloned copy also becomes slightly bigger, kind of doubling the impact of any of those stats. And importantly, because this is activate, and that means it's not limited to its on reveal, this means you can follow it up with stats and still get the clone later. So for instance, um, play a Hulkbuster on turn five on your Scarlet Spider, and it turns into a 4-8 after that Hulkbuster, then you can still copy it into a 4-8. So it's not just the um, early buffs before it's played, which is what it would have had to been in the past with on reveals. Now it's also anything that happens after it's played because you can choose to activate it at a future stage after those buffs have resolved. That also means there are like certain locations that benefit from this that wouldn't an on reveal, like Stark Tower, for instance. If you played this on turn four on uh, an on reveal into Stark Tower, you know, you'd end up with a four seven and a four five. You play Scarlet Spider into Stark's Tower now, it gets buffed up to 4-7, you hit the copy, you get two 4-7s instead of only one. So uh, basically delaying this activation gives you opportunities to juice this up in some secondary ways. There's also, of course, like onboard buffs, Ironheart, whatever it is, uh, those sorts of things become an opportunity. So, you know, do something crazy with like Wong, Ironheart, do something with Shuri, whatever it is, right? Some kind of weird scaling. And then after this has been jacked up to crazy stat totals, then you copy it and, and get an awesome result. So... This card just looks really strong to me. I think at a base, it's good. And then there's opportunities for shenanigans, stat scaling, silliness there with the clones um, that become pretty cool. So some of you might be thinking, hey, wait a minute, if it's making an exact clone, can't I hit activate again on the clone and then you know get another copy of the Scarlet Spider? Well, number one, no, I don't think so. That would just be like too crazy powerful. Um, but number two, no, I think since we expect activate to be a one-time use ability, that like it will kind of like turn off right like it will sort of like gray itself out or something you know like it will be clear that you're not able to activate it so the cloned copy will be the copy with activate already you know triggered resolved unable to be reactivated which um might be important for a card we're going to talk about a little later in the video but um just keep that in mind for now i don't i don't think you'll be able to hit this like multiple times and chain activate copies i think again just expect one copy that's still going to be plenty that's still going to make this card really strong so moving on here to Silver Sable. This is a new 1-1 one, one on reveal. Steal two power from the top card of your opponent's deck. Uh, we've also seen Cassandra Nova, card that was revealed previously in a previous video we talked about, has had her text updated also say steal instead of drain. Just make it very clear here that uh, you're gaining the stats and they're losing the stats, which makes Silver Sable, like to me, crazy high output sort of card. Um, this basically becomes a 1-3, which is above rate for one drops. Like that's already uh, a solid stat line for one drops and also applies that negative two debuff to something in your opponent's deck, which, you know, they may not always play. So it may not always kind of result in a true five point total output from Silver Sable, but often they might need to or want to. It might just hit something that they feel like they have to curve into or just an important, you know, combo piece or hits their Cerebro or Patriot or Iron Man or whatever that's really important to them. And uh, that makes Silver Sable pretty impactful as a five point thing. And then sometimes that debuff might be even more significant. Like we said, Iron Man or something gets murdered sometimes with those sort of debuffs. There's also potential affliction synergies. We see things like Abomination getting cheaper with affliction and high Evo decks. So, you know, between affliction synergies, just total stat output, raw efficiency on this one, man. I mean, this is nuts. Also think about like bounce decks. This just keeps scaling and getting bigger. Like this just looks really good to me i could see this being a staple one drop for just like good card decks bounce decks affliction decks there's so many angles for this one that i think uh this is a card that's definitely going to see play if it stays at this uh at this level this looks quite strong so moving on to our final card here i save this one for the end because i think it's kind of confusing this is symbiote spider-man a four six with another activate keyword here, this one's gonna merge your lowest cost card here with this, and then it's gonna copy its text like it just revealed. And that last sentence in particular, I think, is super confusing on this card. And 
So this is a merge style card, but unlike Hulkbuster and Phoenix Force, it's pretty clear that that card is gonna merge into this one and not that it's going to merge the other way. So like, you know, Phoenix Force or Hulkbuster, they become the other card. Like Hulkbuster goes into that card and it becomes that card. Phoenix Force transforms into that card. It's gonna be the other way for, for Symbiote Spider-Man. So if you have like a human torch on board, the torch is gonna get sucked into the Spider-Man and it's going to be a Symbiote Spider-Man's art on board. It's gonna gain the stats additionally of the human torch, so you know, become a four eight or whatever in this case. And it's gonna have the text. And we know it's gonna do that because otherwise what would it mean to copy its text? Like obviously it's gonna be the Spider-Man because otherwise you wouldn't need to copy the text. It would just be the previous card. Now, the confusing part here is that it says text like it just revealed. And I've seen some people interpreting that to mean that this will work with on reveal effects and that it will re reveal an on reveal effect. So if you, you know, if you use a, I don't know, whatever, an iron heart and you merge an iron heart into Simeon Spider-Man, the suggestion that it will, will go off again and, and cycle three buffs again. I do not think that is the case. Um, number one, it's not revealing again. So it just doesn't really make sense from a, practical kind of visual standpoint also it does say just revealed in past tense that kind of makes it seem like the reveal has already resolved just from a wording standpoint i think this text exists for activate cards because like we talked about um with like scarlet spider we don't expect you to be able to hit the activate button numerous times on the like the clone or whatever or of course on a fresh copy we think it's a one-time use card so for instance, if you like Scarlet Spider, you activate it, you have a clone that has its activate like X'd out or whatever, grayed out. You can't use the activate button. I think if you use Symbiote Spider-Man to merge the cloned copy into Symbiote Spider-Man or, or the original, whatever the case, just one that has a grayed out activate, I think Symbiote Spider-Man is basically saying you're gonna have like a fresh copy of it and then you'll be able to activate it again because like it just revealed to me sort of indicates maybe the activate is is like fresh or new or something and there are other examples too like negasonic teenage warhead or something where like you know the effect kind of goes off and then maybe maybe if you merge negasonic into symbiote spider-man it's like you're getting a fresh just revealed copy that's my theory anyway i i don't know again it's so speculative my thought is if it does work with on reveals it's just like i said kind of clunky visually mechanically it's not actually revealing because it's already been on board you're activating it later but then also it's not like a new thing is popping up and then also it's just kind of like absorbing man in a weird way it's kind of like a better absorbing man almost so i think the use case here for symbiote spider-man is basically with like scarlet spider or other activate cards where you get like, you know, you merge your Scarlet Spider into your Symbiote Spider-Man, it becomes a 411, that you get to activate it again, perhaps with that fresh new text box, like it just revealed. Um, and then that means, um, you know, you got a 411 that copies instead of just a 45. That actually sounds like crazy powerful now that I think about it, because you get the copy of Scarlet Spider and then you also get the copy of Symbiote Spider-Man. Now this also does sort of bear the implication that perhaps activate cards do have to fully reveal in order to use their activate button on the following turn like maybe you can't use them right away because otherwise you could play symbiote spider-man and copy him the same turn you're playing him so like on turn four but then this wouldn't really necessarily this would almost see, say like copy its text like it was just played as opposed to just revealed so i do wonder if activate is like you have to play it and then wait and then you can hit the button starting the following turn that also has some some interesting like game design implications because that allows your opponent to sort of see and understand that you're going to activate a card later which isn't necessarily important because on revealed cards they don't really get a chance to necessarily see those before they activate but just a consideration so I don't know. Ultimately, I just don't know. We're gonna need some explanations on how all this stuff works. I think this card's mechanically very complex sounding when you don't know what's going on. That said, um, what we can tell about this card is it's potentially huge stat scaling for any kind of stat scaling or doubling sort of effect, whether that's Scarlet Spider, Human Torch, Deadpool. Uh, there's all kinds of things. I also think there's some interesting stuff with like maybe Nightcrawler or Jeff or, or Nocturne where you can play this on those and like stack up a big move thing and then maybe get to move it multiple times could help for like cravens and so on so i do think there are probably some move synergies here to explore some activate synergies and any kind of stat scaling synergies as well which makes symbiote spider-man pretty cool but 
I'm curious if that made any sense. <laughs> I'm curious how you guys think all of this is going to work. It, maybe it works with honor reveals too, but that does seem kind of strong and crazy to me because then there's stuff like Black Panther. Like you could play this on four, play the Black Panther on five. You could activate the symbiote Spider Man um, with the Black Panther. Like Black Panther double, symbiote Spider Man goes off, merges it with the eight power Black Panther. That's 14. And then it doubles again because it's revealing again. If you think indeed this works with honor reveals, then you got a 28 power for, you know, Arnim Zola, whatever, uh, Taskmaster, et cetera. I, I don't know. That seems silly to me, but. Um, I don't know. Again, we'll see. We'll see. This is, you know, the risk of data mine videos. We just don't have all the details. We'll, of course, revisit these with more uh, information, more context uh, when they get officially revealed uh, with a season pass each month, and then we'll give them star ratings at that time. But for now, let's go ahead and try to rank these um, from, from highest power to lowest power based on our understanding and expectations today. My number one card is Madam Web. My number two card is Scarlet Spider. My number three card is Silver Sable, which sounds silly because I think this is insane, but I think they're all just really good. My number four card is Aranya. Again, I think this is actually crazy good. It's really hard to put this forth, but they're all just so strong. And then my number five card is Symbiote Spider-Man, and I, I think this actually has a lot of potential as well. So all of these seem pretty darn strong to me. That said, I'm curious uh, how you guys would rank these, what you think, how they're going to work, how does Activate work. A lot to talk about in this video. Share all those thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks so much as always for watching and until next time, game on.